Hello everyone, it's Jeremy here, aka Mr. UW. I'm just making a short video to go over Artemio's new version of his CPS2 Black tool that you would use to revive a suicided CPS2 uh, Black all-in-one motherboard. Um, there's been a f couple of changes. Um, you can still use it the way it was originally intended. At, um, the original version wasn't meant to use a Super BIOS like I showed you on the last one. The original version um, would create a special ISO that you would then use with a working Warzard or new generation cartridge and just you would reburn the whole game to the CPS3 motherboard and then just take Sim 5 out after it was all done and um, use that on the black CPS2 board. Um, in the last video, I showed you how you could create that ISO, but then just extract the SIM5 file, burn that to a CD, and then use the Super BIOS cart and a CPS3 motherboard to burn the 32 megabit SIM. Um, the new version here corrects a little problem with the first version. Uh, the very first version would insert a CPS3 CRC in some of the code space of the CPS2. And what this would do, it, it, was, it would cause the SIM to fail the memory test on certain games um, when you did the memory test on the CPS2 black port. Um, it, didn't, it wouldn't do it on all games, and it won't do it probably with the clean ROMs, if you used uh, Team Avalanche clean ROMs, because the uh, original CPS2 memory test was very weak and didn't then hardly would catch any problems um, but with the Phoenix ROMs uh, which it was designed to use um, before the clean ROMs were out all you had were Phoenix ROMs um, with the Phoenix ROMs it had a stronger uh, memory test than original so it would find more errors and and when you uh, use the uh, Phoenix ROMs to revive certain games and you did a memory test it will fail and I'll show you that with Street Fighter 03 I'll show you the, um, a sim used with the original version of this tool and then a sim used with this new one and you'll see the, the old one fail and the new one not fail the memory test. So uh, I want you to see in this directory here I've got the ISO, the Warzard ISO because you can still use this tool in the original way if you like. I'm not going to. I'm going to show you how to generate the ISO anyway. I've got the actual tool and I've got the Street Fighter 03 US Phoenix set from was Rizula right there that's in the I call it the work CPS 2 directory on my C drive so that's all you need to do this and I got my command prompt right here and so I've got so you can see I've already got pointed my work CPS 2 directory let me go ahead and type up CPS 2 black here just so you can see the instructions Okay, so zoom out just a little bit here for you. All right, as you can see, it's version 1.01, .01, and it shows you how to use the original syntax right there. And at the bottom here, you see you can do the optional dash sp that will generate just the file for supervised usage. Instead of having to create the whole ISO and then extracting the SIM5 file, it'll just burn, it'll just create just a SIM file for use with a Super BIOS cart. So I'm going to show you the original usage and then I'm going to show you the Super BIOS only usage. So what you do is you if we're going to create a modified Warzard image, you'd write CPS2 black space the name of the ISO file which is cap dash WZD dot ISO and it's very specific uh, you can't even change the name of that ISO and make it work you have to use that name all right and then I got to put in as you see in the instructions there the name of the Phoenix set which is SZ3 U dash PNX enter as you can see it created an ISO it patched it and so the ISO is now going to be in our directory and I'll show you that over the swing over here 
so here you have that that new ISO and what you would do is you would take that and you would take a working Warzard cart and you would rewrite the game using the CPS3 motherboard and when it's done writing you would just take out SIM 5 which is a 32 megabit EEPROM or SIM and then you would plug that into the black CPS2 board and it would be revived so like I said in the last video I instead of reburning the entire game we just extracted that sim file and burned just that using the super bios cart because you can write individual sims with the super bios all right so let me show you now how to do it so it'll just do the one sim file you need so in order to burn just the sim file that you need to uh, or to create the sim file that you're going to burn to the CD and then program right, CPS2 black space dash SP then space and the name of that Phoenix set remember was SZ3UPNX and just like that just that quickly it created that sim file See the ROM saved correctly as that name there. And when I come out, you can see at the very bottom here, the very bottom here, there's our SIM file. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna burn that to a CD and then we're gonna use the CPS3 motherboard and a Super BIOS cart to create that SIM for the to revive the CPS2 black. I'll be right back in a minute. All right, so here I have one of my CPS3 motherboards with a Super BIOS cart. What I'm gonna take is I'm gonna take one of these 32 megabit SIMs and I'm gonna put it in the unused slot seven, which isn't used for any CPS3 game, but we can still access that slot with the Super BIOS menu. So I'm gonna put that 32 megabit in there and I'm gonna go ahead and load it up. Hook it up to my Super Gun here. I'm going to boot it. I've already got the CD and the CD-ROM drive, so with my Super BIOS cart, I'm going to start it up, and I'm going to hold the one-player start button to get to Darksoft's menu. All right, so now we're in Darksoft's Super BIOS menu. Let me turn off the light here so there's no glare. All right. Zoom in a little bit for ya. All right. So, we can make sure that that 32 megabit SIM is being detected by going to the flash memory. And as you can see right here, SIM 7 says Intel Sharp 32 megabit. So it's good to go. Um, so we can just exit out of this screen, hit start one player shot, exit out. Now let's go to disk and files. It's going to read the disk, and as you can see, I've got my SIM file that we created right there, ready to be written. So I've already got the cursor on it, so we're going to hit shot one, and we'll bring up this menu. What do we want to do? We want to write it to flash memory. So we'll set down that, and then we'll select SIM 7, where the 32 megabit sim is and i'm going to hit it it's going to say start offset say zero just hit shot one again and as you can see when i scroll down here for you to see it it says erasing sim seven and after a minute it'll start writing the sim and then i'll leave for a minute while it's actually writing the sim because it takes a few minutes and we'll come back just wait until it finishes erasing All right. There you see it writing. 
I said, I'm going to leave for a minute and I'll come back when it's finished writing the sim. Okay, so I'm back. And this is what pops up when the sim finishes writing. It just goes back to the disk and file screen. So the sim is done and we're done with the CPS-3. So I'm just going to cut off the CPS-3 on my super gun and remove this. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and remove the sim 7, 32 megabit. I'm going to set my CPS-3 motherboard to the side. So I've got my I've got my newly written sim right here. I'm going to set this off to the side for a second. Here I have my black all-in-one PCB. Um, I've converted it from Marvel vs. Capcom, which uh, the CPS-2 black version used 64 megabit mask ROMs instead of the 32 megabit that a lot of... Uh, the normal b-boards used um, so this is Street Fighter 03 I actually used the, the EEPROMs and mask ROMs off of a um, Street Fighter 03 b-board I had that was completely acid damaged from the battery um, I lost one so I reburned just the number 16 using a 27C322 and had to adjust these jumpers right here but I was able to convert this board to uh, Street Fighter 03 for this purpose. And as you can see right there, it's the old sim I burned using the first tool in the Phoenix ROMs. So I'm just going to load this up and show you. All right. So as you can see, turn this off. This is Street Fighter Alpha 3. So I'm playing Street Fighter Zero 3. I'm going to turn this down a little bit. So you can hear me talk. Alright, so as you can see, the game is playing. Point up. You can play and do all that. But here's what I want to show you. Go to the memory test. And you're going to see everything pass until we get to the very last ROM file on the sim. It looks so good so, f so far. It failed the test. All right, so now what I'm going to do is let me adjust this real quick. All right, so what I'm going to do now is turn this off and replace that sim with the new one I just burned. All right, so. I've removed the one I used with the old tool. I'm going to put this new one we just made on there. And I'm going to boot it back up for you. All right. So as you can see, it's booting just like the other version did. This is Street Fighter Alpha 3. On the manager screen, we're going to select memory test again. And now, let's watch it check all these ROMs here. And it passed and automatically exits out of the memory test, which means it worked fine. So, like I said, the the real good version, 
real good part of this new version of his tool is that it doesn't inject the um, CPS3 CRC into the SIM file. So you can basically put the SIM file up there and it's as close to original as you're going to get. It's going to pass all the tests. And if you use one of the clean versions, uh, the clean ROMs from Team Avalanche, uh, you wouldn't even be able to tell there was no battery on it. It would pass the test and everything. So, there you have it. Um, I really like this tool because now you can basically convert that CPS2 uh, black PCB in an almost any CPS2 game. You just have to burn some new EPROMs and adjust the jumpers. That's another video for another time. So, um, get the tool and start using it. Enjoy some uh, revived games with uh, without failing memory tests. Well, see you at the next video. Sit, Kishi. Sit. Good dog. Oh, <laughs>